freedom and happiness. That's all I want, freedom and happiness. Whenever your gut instinct is screaming at you, you got to listen to it. Oh, what's the secret of business and all this shit? I'm like, you've got to go and create it and take it. Hang out with the people who are doing the kind of stuff that you want to do. There's endless examples of people who are traveling the world and making their money online and your whole life changes. You're listening to The Remote Revolution Show, the show that brings insights from industry experts across the world of digital business, so you too can take your business online, travel the world, and live with freedom. If you're new to the show, the podcast is produced every Tuesday for your enjoyment, and show notes can be found at www.remoterevolutionshow.com. Come back often and feel free to add the show to your favorites in your YouTube, Spotify, and iTunes feeds. If you want to follow us on social media, which you should because we're awesome, join the community by searching for at Remote Fit Pro, where you'll find daily content to help you explore the remote revolution oh yeah and if you want to connect with us individually you can do that too via the links in the show notes now let's get into this week's episode with your hosts james moody and george crawshaw hello welcome back to the remote revolution show today super excited to have you back with us and we really really appreciate all of you listeners that keep coming back and viewers on youtube that keep coming back and listening and watching these episodes we've got another brilliant interview for you today but first i want to make sure that you've heard about the online startup workshop this is a workshop that myself james are partnering up with ben coomber and rich wellington to come together to create a startup workshop for you guys over two days in spain at our villa for you to learn how to take your business online within them two days all right we're going to give you a system that's going to teach you everything that you need to know in terms of your mindset in terms of making sales generating leads and delivering great results for clients online in them two days so that you can leave with a blueprint with a plan and with hopefully some stuff done that you can take away and start growing and scaling your online business okay this workshop is going to be held on the 23rd and the 25th of november 2018 in Denia in Spain. So if you can board a plane, you have what it takes to build a fully operational online fitness business within a single weekend without any crazy tech overwhelm, fear of failure, or how do I get more clients syndrome. You've got what it takes. We'd love to see you there. If you want to find out more about the event, then we have still got some early bird tickets left where you'll receive a 33% discount. All you need to do is go to www remotefitpro.com forward slash Spain dash workshop. Okay, that's remotefitpro.com forward slash Spain dash or hyphen or whatever workshop. Okay, go to that link, find out more about the event. If you think you are you can get there, if you're excited about it, if you've got the time, if you want to really grow your business online and you want to come and spend them two days with me, James, Ben, Rich and our team, then make sure you're there in November. So, Let's get into this week's episode with Vince Del Monte, our guest today, a best-selling author, a former WBFF pro fitness model and an online fitness business coach. And for the past 12 years, he's helped thousands of men transform their physiques through his coaching and online programs whilst founding the M5 movement that is muscle, mindset, money, mission and marriage. Today, Vince is known as one of the world's leading sales and marketing fitness authorities, working with online entrepreneurs and business thought leaders in his high-level seven-figure mastermind. And he coaches clients to quickly scale a business and take a quantum leap, both mentally and financially. This guy knows what he's talking about. He's been there. He's got the experience in scaling online fitness programs online. And he's been doing this for way before most people that are even listening to this episode, listening to this podcast, even knew about. All right, it was well over 10 years ago he started doing this stuff and he's made a huge success of it. And now he really helps people master all areas of their life. So I hope you get a lot from this episode. This guy's really got a lot to share. So enjoy this episode and I'll see you on the inside. So hey Vince, how are you doing man? Thank you so much for joining us today on the Remote Revolution Show. Hey, George, how's it going, man? Yeah, it's going real good. It's going really good. Excited to have you on. For for the listeners, this is take two. We had a bit of a <laughs> malfunction with the first one, but we've practiced this once, so I'm excited for another <laughs> another epic interview, man. It was absolutely incredible. So, Vince, you know, I'd love you to start by sharing, you know, like you did 
your story, where you got started in the business world and the fitness industry. Yeah, um, was a former runner all through high school, cross country, sorry, cross country track and field, competitive triathlete, and uh, I grew up in a family of runners. So I, I you know, really uh, got to develop that uh, grit, that endurance that comes with that lonely sport, that painful sport of running, not knowing that that was laying a lot of bricks, a lot of firm foundation for what was to come in the future. I went to university, got an exercise science degree. Um, like most guys, wasn't 100% clear what I wanted to do with it. I was thinking of being a gym teacher. I ended up getting into the fitness industry as a personal trainer. This was when I was skinny Vinny. Uh, all through university and uh, started working off at a local YMCA for a whopping $10 an hour. And uh, I actually just fell in love with the industry. I love the idea of writing workouts. Uh, early influencers were Ian King, Charles Poliquin, the late Charles Poliquin, and uh, was really just instantly uh, in love with seeing people build muscle and lose fat. And uh, the only catch was I wasn't built like a personal trainer at the time and I'd finished my eligibility as a runner so there was this opportunity moving into a new career new season of life to transform my body and that's when I ventured into moving from distance runner to bodybuilder so and so weird saying those world words but I was just curious what could I do in the gym and I had a dramatic transformation I gained 41 pounds in six months and you know 149 and 190 uh, obviously, a newbie makes dramatic changes. Those uh, changes essentially changed the trajectory of my entire life. One, it started to build my personal training career. And uh, many years later, we lay the foundation of a seven-figure online fitness business dedicated to skinny guys who wanted to build muscle without drugs, without bogus supplements, and in less time. That was my you know, hook. It still is my... That's my, that's my thing. And uh, I never realized there were so many skinny guys out there who wanted to do just what I had done. And I had a guide who took me through the whole thing. I called him my skinny guy savior. I gave myself that nickname many years later. I call myself the skinny guy savior, but this guy saved me. I met him at my church of all places. He was a natural level bodybuilder. And uh, he must have heard me praying too loud one day. <laughs> and he came up to me and he said, yo, um, your dad tells me you're interested in building muscle. I guess him, he was friends with my father. And uh, I uh, started taking his advice. And he was the guy that introduced me to full body workouts, uh, low volume, high intensity, uh, variable rep ranges, and uh, you know, eating six meals a day, three shakes, and uh, three whole food meals, and cutting down on the cardio. And, and that essentially was the foundation of my first ebook, No Nonsense Muscle Building. A couple years later, which went on to sell literally tens of thousands of copies and uh, which was the foundation of building a seven figure business for skinny guys who want to build muscle. And I, I really just kind of doubled down on one person. That person was me. I, I uh, just told the skinny Vinny story and, uh, you know, my programming is good, but, you know, like nobody's programming is rocket science. Nobody's nutrition programming is rocket science. I mean, we're all teaching the same stuff. Uh, but what I realized is that. I wasn't selling a service. I was selling myself. And I just sold myself. I sold my story. And it was a believable story. It was a story that other skinny guys uh, could buy into. And uh, I really just doubled down on the beginner skinny guy market who never had their first transformation. And I know we're going to talk about business today, but that's your first lesson. You can't be all things to all people. You know, I didn't talk about fat loss. I didn't market to women. I didn't do body weight stuff. I didn't do powerlifting. I didn't do... I, I, F, Y, M. I didn't do keto. It was just, it was simple, no nonsense muscle building. All right. And that was my brand. And I ran with that. I haven't looked back. I've been running with the same, with the same beliefs for over, over 10 years now. So uh, that's one of the big things. If you're going to start an online business, you need to become a specialist. And, uh, and there needs to be a real story uh, from uh, when you first started so people can relate and say, yeah, he was just like me. I've got the pictures. I got the painful stories. And uh, that was the beginning of launching uh, an entire series of muscle building products to come because what was interesting was that that first product, you know, I ran with that for three years, all right? And when you have one product, it's called your flagship product, 
people come along for the journey. And then uh, what, what do they say when they're done the program? If you take good care of them and you deliver results, what's next? Vinny? What's next? Yeah. What's, and that was the brand. What I built a brand, I, I built a seven figure online fitness business around two words. What's next? And every product I came out with was essentially uh, my next transformation. So I don't know if we're recording, if people watching this can see the videos, but you can see the products up here. There's Maximizer Muscle, uh, there's uh, Live Large TV, there's Stay Shredded Status, Hypertrophy Max, and every one of those products represents a different transformation with a different goal. And that was the core of my business model, Evolve transform and people will come on the journey with you and as long as you're evolving you know if you're getting bigger if you're getting leaner if you're getting stronger people want what you have and this all comes down to a core belief i have if you want to achieve something in life you need to find a trusted mentor who has what you have in excess all right so a lot of people look at vince and like hey how's this guy have a big seven figure online fitness business he's not even that big yeah i know but the guys that are following my stuff aren't as big as me and I figured that out early on. You can't market to everybody, but I realized I was a little further ahead than guys who wanted the, the build I had, the lifestyle I had. And I spoke to those guys. And uh, you know, the bigger guys would be like, how does this guy give muscle building advice? He's still weak. I'm not marketing to you, man. <laughs> it's cool I have your attention though. I guess it's having the, it's having the, uh, the balls and the, the confidence to do that, even though you're not at the peak. You're not an IFBB pro stepping on the Mr. Olympia stage, but you still know more than the average person out there, which means you have a, you have a duty to serve that person. Yeah. I find that really interesting how you're like, I've got a message and I'm going to serve that message. But two things jumped up to me when you're going through that, Vince. The first one is, what does someone do if they don't have a personal and powerful transformation story of themselves? So maybe they've always been fit and healthy. They've always been that genetic freak and they've started training people. How do they get around this situation? You got you to gotta do it. You can't, you can't fake it. See, you need, see, you need something in your business that people can't copy, right? That's the brand. That's the brand I'm guessing. Right, right. Exactly. So when I transform my body, you know, I'll give you guys, I'll give you guys an example. When I went, uh, for my WBFF pro card in 2011, I was 227 pounds. I did a bulk and it, it was, you know, I had a nice gut. <laughs> I took that picture, it was in January, and I told my entire audience, I'm getting my pro card in April, all right? I put a uh, date on the calendar, and I invited my audience to follow me along for the journey. So what I did was I hired a pro bodybuilder, IFBB pro Ben Pakulski. I paid his insane rate to get coaching from, and all he did is he just wrote my meal plan, all right? Uh, he wrote my workouts and my meal plan. Everything pretty much happened on text message because it was when he was in his like prime. So he was like, you know, trying to win the Arnold and everything. So uh, I announced this event and I invited people to follow along. So what was I doing there? A lot of things. Obviously, I was putting myself out there. I was buying attention, all right? The number one thing you have to own if you want to make money is attention, Money follows attention, all right? And uh, I gave myself a deadline and I set out to achieve a goal of something I'd never achieved before. I set myself up for massive failure, massive embarrassment. And within four months, I went from 227 to 195. I was, I think, 4.8% body fat. I hardly got my pro card. I think they gave it to me because they felt sorry for me because I missed it on the first attempt. I went to a different show two weeks later. I got third and they called my name out as third. I'm like, holy cow, guys, just give it to me backstage or something. This is embarrassing. I hardly got the pro card, competed at the world championships. But guess what? I documented the entire thing on video, turned into a eight part DVD series that I sold for $300. I launched that thing, uh, after I got the pro card, I made $70,000 like in two days. And because the, the audience wanted what I had achieved, even though I hardly got the pro card, even though when I competed at the WBFF World Fitness Model Championships with 20 guys, I didn't even get the top 10 call out. You know how embarrassing that was in your own hometown, Toronto, Ontario, when you got your whole family and your family's asking you, 
How come they didn't bring you to the front? Uh, uh, because I wasn't in the top 10. And then when you go and ask the judges, hey, what place did I get? One guy says 11th because he feels bad for you because he knows you and they don't judge after top 10. And everybody gets 11th because they don't have time to judge from 11 to 20. So they just quickly push you off to the side. And he says, well, you're 11th. I talked to another guy. We're tied for last. <laughs> so to nine guy, 10 guys are tied for last, right? And then another guy said, I had you 13th. And another guy said, I had you about 16th or 17th. I'm trying to you know, reconcile this in my brain. Then I'm backstage with all these guys who were, you know, all of them thought they should have won. All these you know, shredded guys, you know who some of these guys are, literally crying backstage. And I'm thinking to myself, what am I complaining about? I made 70 grand. I made more than first place is going to make from you know what he got from the show, whatever they give him, which isn't much. You know, I still haven't got my pro card in the mail, by the way. <laughs> you're, supposed ah, to actually, you're, actually, you're actually supposed to get a card. They never sent it to me, you know, eight years later. So like, what a joke. So I quickly realized this whole fitness competition thing is a joke. It's like a circus. And every time you go to these shows, you're just competing against different clowns. And I'm like, you know what? I got to take advantage. I got to figure out how to monetize this thing. And I monetized the show. You know, I took advantage of that stage, the lights, being beside all the other competitors. And I said to myself, even if I come dead last, I'm going to make more than all these guys combined. And that was my goal. So uh, anybody who's thinking about competing, you got to have your own reason for competing. And let me tell you, don't try and win the show because you're going to be very disappointed because your fate is not in your own hands. Mm, very true. And Vince, I want to pick up something here because you said you created a DVD that was 300 bucks. You sold I'm guessing hundreds, if not thousands of copies to get to that number, 70K. It was easy back then, man. There was no social media. Today, we can't do that. What would you say to those kind of people out there saying, I can't do it now, there's YouTube. How can I monetize a video transformation? Uh, I'll just quickly tell you, my coach told me it was too competitive in 2005. When I launched my ebook, No Nonsense Muscle Building, he said, I think it's a bad idea that you're going in this muscle building space. We did the research and there was 12 other guys, 12. Now, listen, most of these guys aren't even around anymore. All right. They were my competitors. They all had long form sales pages and we were all selling a muscle building program, an ebook. And we all had skinny to muscular transformations. And he said, you're going to get crushed. There's way too many guys doing this. You should try a different market. This was in 2005. All right. So you have to understand that money follows attention and there are channels like YouTube and Instagram and Facebook that are all based on three words, pay to play. All right. You got to pay for attention, man. And there's a lot of things that do work and you have to figure out what they are. You know, what do you mean by, with, what do you mean by pay to play? What do we mean by that? You got to run paid ads. Why? These, 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 because these platforms are throttling your traffic. Uh, if you try and post something on Facebook years ago, you know, a normal video I put on YouTube, um, sorry, on Facebook, you get like 10, 15,000 views in the first 24 hours. I post it now, it gets 300 views. I got a million followers. People think the followers are fake. I and mean, there's Facebook just throttles the traffic. So they have limited inventory space on their feed and what they show. And because Facebook has people that they have to uh, pay, right? They're a big company. They only can show the people that are, are the most relevant to their audience. So you're competing with people that are spending money to get shown. So organic is dead. You can't just post good content anymore. You have to put money behind it. All right. And this all people are like, but I don't have any money. Well, this doesn't have anything to do with money. This has to do with belief and courage. Because if you believe your stuff is really good, you have to trust that when people see it, they'll invest into your services. It's just the name of the game. Your, pro your competition has the same problems as you. So you have to start coming up with a strategy. And the strategy that works really well for us is social proof. Uh, that will never go away. Hearing other people's real life stories in a non hypey way and hearing them contribute you contribute your program or you as their coach as their success as the link as their guide is the number one thing you have to build your business around helping others. People have to see that you are a resort a result oriented business. You have a 
a transformation culture. And um, there's room for everybody. You know, I, I coach over 70 guys and I'm behind the scenes. We just had one girl make over 70 grand in one week on her Instagram following. I had another guy who just did 34 grand in one day from his webinar. Uh, I have friends who are spending over $13,000 a day. Uh, other guys spending over $20,000, $25,000 a day crushing it. There is more than enough out there than you can imagine. And if you think that there's not enough for you, it's because you're hanging out with people that are saying it's not, there's not enough out there. All right, so you've got it 10x. you got to get around people who are spending money, making money, and you got to hear how they're doing it. Yeah, I love that, man. So one of the things we get all the time is the saturation of the marketplace. And as long as there are people who are still overweight, still skinny, there's always going to be a demand. And it's the job of the influencer, the coach, whatever you want to call yourself, to find their particular angle. And I think that's what you're really hitting home here is you found your angle, you stuck with your angle, and then you grew that. So some of, some of the things I just want to build off this uh, video before we jump into the next part is people come to us all the time with like a million product ideas. They're like, I want to launch an ebook. I want to launch a website. I want to do all these things. How do we simplify this for the first time online coach who wants to get things moving forward? What do they do to start with? You got to commit to a category of one. You know, we just launched a, a pre-workout that's called the Bentley of pre-workouts. You know, nothing comes close. Uh, look at the formula. Talk to the top scientists in the industry. Comp we don't have competition, all right? And you've got to be in a category of one. So you have to do one thing and you have to do it better than everybody else. And it's got to be uh, for a specific person who's got a specific problem and you've got to make a specific promise. All right, so those three Ps there and you build an offer around that. I've got one guy in my coaching program. He went from, uh, you know, uh, you know, five figures, five figures a year, uh, corporate desk job to over five figures a month in just under a year. He charges $2,500 a month for a weight loss program. $2,500 a month. So what did he do? He says, I'm not competing with $40 eBooks. And he works with one specific type of woman. All right. And it's all he does. He doesn't work with the men. He doesn't work it with you if you're under 40. He doesn't work with you if you don't have a couple kids. Like it's ultra, ultra niche. So you got to go from niche to sub niche. You got to get highly, highly targeted. And uh, then you crank the prices up, right? And you learn how not to sell, but how to communicate the value to them so that your price points are a drop in the bucket. And you create an automated sales funnel around that. You build a team out. So a number of steps, but it all comes back to deciding what you're going to do better than everybody else. You cannot do two things anymore. You'll get crushed. Heck, it's hard to come out with two supplements. Imagine I came out with two supplements at once right now. People wouldn't know which one do I go with. People are so overwhelmed with the next red shiny object that if you seem unclear about what you're offering your audience, imagine how unclear they're going to be. Um, yeah, that was a problem that I experienced after a couple of years. People started emailing me saying, I don't know which program of yours to start with, so I'm not going to get any of them. And you'll find that the higher you go up, focus always wins. The guys that I know who are doing uh, anywhere from 10 to $20 million a year, they've got one thing. They're not spread thin. All right, you look at the biggest companies in the world, they're all highly focused. You even look at, like at Red, Red Bull, you know, they have like Red Bull, but then they've got sugar-free Red Bull. It's like, it's, you know, Coke has been like Coke for years. They got Diet Coke and Coke Zero, but it's still, it's still Coke. You, you've got to have one thing, all right? You, you can't be going wide because if you go wide, then you can't go deep, all right? So you've got you've to go an inch wide, a mile deep, not a mile wide and an inch deep. So I'm sure, George, you probably want to jump in on some of the stuff here. But when it comes to wealth creation, which I feel like you're very on top of as well, like it's not just you being the business owner, but I'm sure you've got other things that you're very aware of. We hear people say we want to, we want to generate multiple streams of revenue um, or some kind of income. How do we then approach this situation when it comes to wealth generation if we're trying to go all in on one thing to begin with? Yeah, just commit to one thing. Commit to one thing until you hit a specific milestone. Like get the head out of the – get your – Head out of the clouds, get your feet on the ground, and start marching and start fighting day to day battles that will come with hitting your first financial milestone. I, you know, I, I get people really focused. Hey, in year one, where are we going to be? 
And for some guys, it's going from zero to 10K a month. Uh, other guys, it's just getting laser targeted to go, hey, we're going to go from 10K to 50K a month this year. That's it. And we're going to do it with this one path. So you got to figure out your millionaire math, and then you got to figure out your millionaire path. And that path is always one thing. All right. The minute you do two or three things, it's like fitness. Fitness people should get this. Here's because fitness people are the people preaching that you can't get big and get lean at the same time. They're the ones preaching you can't get huge and uh, what I just said, big and lean. You can't get, you know, size and strength at the same time. They're kind of conflicting goals. You've got to go in the gym with a clear goal. Are we trying to power lift or are we trying to bodybuild? They're two different programs. You look at a bodybuilder, look at a power lifter, they have two different programs. So people are now, uh, I mean, heck, maybe it's the fitness people that are trying to wrap their minds around achieving fat loss and muscle building at the same time who are struggling with this <laughs> because they're now taking that multitasking mindset into business and it doesn't work like that. The definition of multitasking is doing two things poorly at the same time. We can't t- ride. I think Charles Paulkin might have said this. You can't ride two horses ass at the same time uh you've got to pick one you know are we going for strength or are we going for size are we well, going scary. for scary are that's we going scary. for size yeah you're right because people have this mentality that they need to do it all right now they, they haven't committed that i'm going the distance they're not committed that i'm playing the long game they don't understand that things have to happen in seasons all right and as soon as you say hey We're just going to get laser focused. I know what you guys are focused on right now. You guys just pick that one number to take what you're doing to the next level. Then you guys will have funds to even to discuss if it makes sense to do another thing. Or you might be like, hey, we just hit our next benchmark and we haven't even started doing YouTube ads. We haven't done Facebook ads yet. We're just doing webinar. We haven't done, we don't have a phone closer yet. And you start seeing all the other things you're not even doing to take that one thing to the next level. And this is how you go to 10 million plus and then a hundred million plus and it just comes down to doing the one thing better people are losing the quality component of what makes a business successful it's not doing stuff it's doing stuff well and what i'm finding is that you know in the business world i think gary v came up with this term we just got too many entrepreneurs there's too many uh they're, they're fanboys they want us i know guys that started this like 15 never not 15 years it was five six years ago and, and they, nothing's changed because they just want to say, I'm an entrepreneur. I've got my own business. They're not, they're not businessmen. They're not making the decisions, hard decisions that businessmen make. They say, I want to be a boss, but they don't want to write checks. How can you be a boss if you don't build a team? Like, <laughs> so they want to say they're a part of the club, but they don't want to do the things that make you grow. So they put on the facade. And unfortunately, when you start to put on a facade, you start faking. When you start faking, we can't fix anything. Yeah, for sure. I, I think I think exactly what you're saying is is the same as what you said earlier when James asked about you know how do you know I haven't got any money? How do I spend money on Facebook? And you said it's about being courageous and being confident in what it is you're selling, and it's that same principle that you have to apply to picking one thing because so many of us were like. We pick one thing. We're like, oh, it's not good enough. I'm going to add this to it, and then I'm going to do this other thing, and then I'm going to add this other program. Yeah. And it's just you, we're trying to be able to be great for all these different people instead of, like you said, being courageous and confident in that one thing, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, and what happens is people jump too soon. Like yeah. I'm telling you straight up, if, if you want to, if you want to build a successful Facebook ads campaign, you're looking at three to six months. Like one. I mean, you guys are doing this. You guys, did you guys have overnight success when you launched your first campaign? No, <laughs> no. We spent a lot of money. A lot of money. And this is what, this is what <laughs> I was going to say. Like, so how did how, how, how did you justify continuing to spend more? Spend more? Because we knew that it worked. What we had was great, and we knew that if we continually spent money, we're going to build our audience, right? And once we build right. our audience, we're going to be able to test our offer. And we're going to be able to improve right. our offer until someone buys it. Then we can see right. the result is, all right, we spent this much money. This many people bought. Repeat, do the numbers stick? Repeat, do the numbers yeah. stick? Scale the ads, do the numbers stick? And just continually knowing your numbers. And uh, this is what I was going to say about the paid ads, right? So many people are like coming to paid ads, like the one return investment like that. You have got yeah. to know that, okay. yeah, you're putting money into it because it's bringing you a return eventually. But yeah. you've got to be patient, right? Confident, courageous. Yeah. 
it, it's it's scary. I, I totally get it. To start uh, putting funds out and not seeing an ROI, your immediate reaction is to pull the plug. And um, it's a fantastic conversation. And there's obviously a number of pieces that can come before starting a paid advertising campaign. And I think this is why a coach who's already been down that path is the best place you can invest your money because I've had a lot of coaching clients come to me and say, Hey, I want to start Facebook ads. And I've said, have you optimized the offer yet with warm traffic, like some affiliates? Um, no, do you have any data with your own traffic? Uh, no. Um, so why do you think a colder audience on Facebook is going to convert for you? That's absolutely nuts. So you, you have to, you have to optimize the offer so that you're not going to lose your shirt. And there's a lot of things we can do. Do you have someone who uh, knows how to make the lookalike audience? There's a lot of steps you can take to offset the risk of paid advertising. And um, you, you need to get one educated. You need to know what you're getting yourself into. There's so many different pieces that make a Facebook ad successful that you need to first find somebody who is running traffic and managing other people's money successfully. Uh, the individual that I work with manages literally millions of dollars a month. Not not of my money. Not yeah. But of his, all between all of his clients. All right. So he knows the ins and outs. Uh, he understands uh, that Facebook is finicky. Sometimes they'll just shut your accounts down. You know, because, uh, you know, they got some big issue in court and they need to offset the risk with their partners. And then all of a sudden and he's just in the know. All right. So if you're going to do something, you've got to commit to doing it and arm yourself. All right. That doesn't mean you need to go with the guy that's charging 10 grand a month plus 10 percent of ad spend right out of the gate. But you need to find somebody who's you know, I'm familiar with the fitness market and you need to ensure that whoever's running the ads for you is vetted by somebody else. I always say trust, but verify. So if I'm going to hire somebody, I want to know who have you worked with. I need three referrals. It's not one, not two, always three referrals. And I like to get their contact information and I just like to hear their experience and how things are working. And that's how you'll just, again, prepare yourself for success. So um, a lot of similarities with regards to transforming your body. And um, one of the biggest things that you need if you're gonna run paid ads is data. Data, data, data. You can't, I, I am still shocked by how many people tell me that they're running ads but they don't know what's going in, they don't know what's going out, they don't have a tracking system in place to track revenue over time so they can you know, assess if they can go in the hole for a little. and this requires another skill set. And you're like, wow, I got to hire another guy to get me the data. And I got to hire, I got to get, you know, another platform to do the split testing properly. This isn't for everyone. You know, the, you know, business is not for everyone. Gary Vee's making it mainstream. Ty Lopez is making it mainstream. Everybody thinks I can be in business for myself. Business is for big boys. And, mm. uh, if you want to be a boss, a boss writes checks, writes a lot of checks. And you just, and again, I'm not trying to scare people. I'm just trying to mentally prepare you to not be shocked when you run your first campaign and maybe you do a 500 or a $3,000 test budget and maybe you only make 500 bucks back after a $3,000 test. It doesn't mean you failed. What you guys, you guys just said this, you're gaining data. You're figuring out what works and what's working specifically for your ad creative, for your funnel. And you have to be prepared to maybe lose money in the initial phases while you're testing and optimizing to get a campaign successful. But you have to realize that if you can make it successful, the returns are not unlimited, but they're at scale. And this is what makes you one of the great ones. And this is why it's kind of actually funny that some of the guys that I know who are most successful in business. I know these guys because I, you know, I've been to Las Vegas with them and guess where they are during the trip. <laughs> they're on the slots, not the slots, but they're, they're, they're playing poker. They're gamblers. Yeah. So, so, so there's almost uh now I do know guys that are very risk averse who are successful 
and they go a little slower. They're more cautious. But you have to realize that you're gambling. There is there there is a there's going to be fear in your gut, and if you're not comfortable with fear in your gut, the potential of loss, losing a little, maybe a lot in the initial phases, you know, paid advertising is not for you. Uh, and there's other ways. The good news is there's other ways to acquire customers and leads. They take a little longer, more organic strategies, but they're certainly out there. And paid ads is just one of many different ways to build a customer base. And uh, I just want to make sure people know that it isn't the only way. It is a very powerful way. You just have to be very, very informed and educated and armed. And you have to ensure that that next step makes sense for your business. Because there might be a lot of things you can do to acquire revenue that don't require that risk yet. So uh, one of the values of a great coach is that he doesn't just assign you your steps, but he assigns them in the right order. Mm -hmm. Timing is absolutely everything in business. I think that's something that George and I have realized very, very much so recently is when to make the next move and making that at the right time. But one, one thing I want to touch on here is you've got to know what you want and what kind of business you're trying to build. Like what Vinny is saying here is there's not you're not better than someone else if you suddenly go and decide you're going to create this huge performance business with a huge team, all this kind of stuff. If you want to have a small, small business that's doing you, I don't know, five, six, seven K a month, that's great. But you need to make a decision of what kind of business you want to grow. If you sit on the fence between the two and you're saying to yourself, look, I want to have all the glitz and glam, but I'm not willing to take the risk. You're going to find yourself in a horrible position because you've got to be able to absorb that. So you've got to know what the business you one is and again it's not one that's better than the other one it's just a model that suits you and your lifestyle and what your goals are what your mission is how big you want to go and achieve so i think getting clear on that right from the off is a very important step when it comes yeah. to building a business yeah Vinny, i just saw when you were walking around your house on your, on your phone doing this interview you had a plaque on the wall that said about muscle mindset marriage mission i think there's one more m can you just explain what that is and, and why it's important to you yeah the five m's of manhood Muscle, mindset, money, mission, and marriage. That's really my journey. You know, I started off seeking muscle and not realizing that muscle could be a stepping stone to getting me everything else I wanted in life. And uh, muscle helped expand my thinking. And uh, what's interesting is it's way easier to build muscle than it is to build your mind. Mm. And if you've ever competed on stage, it's insane. You know, I've been to the Olympia, the Arnold Classic, and while you're standing beside these guys who are like 220 pounds, solid muscle, it's shocking how small they think. Not all of them, obviously. It's amazing how scarce their mentality is. And you start having a conversation with the guy, he thinks you're out to get something as if like there's not 7 billion people in the world. <laughs> there's nothing I need from you. You know, they just... So I'm like, wow, the muscle can be built way faster than the mind. And that's why mind, the mindset's the next piece of the framework of becoming the best version of you. And then from there, once we build the body, we expand our thinking on what's possible, we move to money. And the reason we have to focus on money is because we need cash to fund our true calling, right? Most of us first... Uh, seek money just to cover our basic needs but if you think about it just covering your basic needs it's it's uh i mean selfish because you're just covering your needs but to impact the world we need sufficient funds to move from career to calling another word for calling is mission you know what you really are meant to do i mean i've always wanted to be a public speaker i've all my father was a pastor for 35 years and i've seen the impact he's had on men's lives at a very deep level and i realized that to have that kind of impact i first had to develop relationships and i had to help people i had to become credible and service them in an area that i was an expert in which is why i started with muscle right i spent almost 10 years helping guys build their biceps right but now we're helping guys build their businesses but it's because i've built that rapport you know i couldn't lead with building a business because i didn't have a successful business but I had, a, I had a decent body. So that's why we have to build the funds so that we can reach more people because money follows attention. If you don't have attention, you can't reach more people. You can't have maximum contribution. So, so that's why mission comes after money. 
because I think a lot of us are doing something more for a, a means to an end. Like what I'm doing now is what I've been called to do, help men build successful and profitable online fitness businesses. But the people that are coming into the coaching program are all individuals for the most part who have watched my fitness journey first, you know, and now it's, it's really cool because many of the men are coming into the coaching program, not because I've just built the online fitness business, but because I'm a family man. I've got three kids. I have a wife, I'm 38 and I'm in that season of life as well. So many men are now trying to navigate, Hey, I'm about to have my first kid. Hey, I just got engaged. Uh, Hey, uh, how do you do it? And not to say that I have the answers. I have many mentors in my life in that area as well, but it's really cool to see men on this journey. So I've built this framework essentially around my aspiration of becoming a better man and seeing primarily because of the role my father has played in my life. And, you know, he's texting me probably 10 times a day, we're very close. Our family has a group text message that probably gets over 75 messages a day, most of them from my dad, and they're Bible verses and motivational quotes and video clips on YouTube. And he understands that there's no point of achieving anything in life if you don't have your family by your side. And there's no point of crossing the finish line when I'm in my 60s, 70s all by myself. So we spoke a lot about risks and, and taking yourself and your belief and your confidence. What's some of the times where you've most been tested in the journey of entrepreneurship, fatherhood, whatever it might be, where you've really had your back against the wall and you've gone to yourself, right, it's now or never. What are some of those moments you've had? Oh, man. There's a couple. I think they're all rooted in failure or something not being as successful as you thought it was going to be. And there's been so many launches I've done. You put so much time and money into building something new and you're in that creation mode. So you feel like you're making progress, but the real progress, I mean, let's be honest, life is not about the journey, but life is about the destination. <laughs> you know, you don't want to be on the journey the entire time. <laughs> At a certain point, we need to arrive where we want to get. Right. Oh, life's all about the journey. Uh, I like to get to where I'm trying to go, actually. <laughs> mm. I actually, you know what I'm saying? I mean, we can get, got, and so I can understand the journey part when we're building something, but then when it comes time to launch, you know, I'll give you an example. Uh, M5 Apparel was an epic launch, was an epic failure. You know, I was first advised not to do it. Vince, you're not a clothing company. You know nothing about clothing. And I kind of knew that I will say like I wasn't this I wasn't trying to turn this into a big profit generator. But at the same time, I thought when I launched it, I was going to sell out of everything I had. And uh, there were some things we could have done way better. Like we didn't really do have any video marketing or we didn't use influencers at all. It was just really built around me. But I'm big on being real so people can relate. You know, I put out 30 grand just for the apparel and then you put out, you know, 7,500 bucks for the website. And then you got your tech team and your, you know, graphic designers, the photo shoot. So it all came in around 40, 40 plus grand. I figured I was going to sell out the first day and, you know, hey, cool. I'm going to get a whole, but we had about, how many items do we have? We had two joggers, two shirts, two shorts. So one, two, three, four, two tanks, six items, hat, seven different items. I figured I was going to sell out like in a few days. I checked my account after day one. There was three grand in my account. Epic fail. Epic fail. I thought I was going to go in and see 30, 40 grand and break even and have my clothing in the hands of a lot of diehard M5 followers. And it was an epic failure. And I'm like, my coaches told me not to do it, which is the most painful part, who I pay. So... <laughs> But I'd already invested into a relationship to have the clothing made. I didn't want to compromise his relationship with China, who was building it all. And the people that got the clothing love the clothing. I wear it every day. It's amazing. But it was a fail. And mm. uh, we have it. Now I just gift it. I give it away for free. You know, there's always – here's the thing, guys. I mean, it, it, I guess you could say it was a fail from the standpoint of, like, thinking I was going to sell out right away and recoup my funds and all that. Um, 
I gift it now to my diehard M5 followers. So it's a way to create attention. So there's always a way to salvage mistakes and to find the you know silver lining in something. But if you think about it, I could have put forty, fifty thousand dollars into Instagram ads to grow my coaching program that is growing at a rapid rate. So when you think of like, so it was a failure because I could have put that same amount of money into something else that would have produced an ROI. And then what happens is, you know, your wife asks you, hey, how'd the, how'd, how'd the launch go? She's been watching you slave, working on the business in times that you should be giving attention to the kids and to her. And she's like, hey, so how'd it go? Um, horrible. And my wife, you know, she doesn't say anything. She just like, you know, oh, shoot, honey, sorry to hear that. But it's like chips your credibility, chips away your credibility, right? And then, you know, that happens a second time, a third time, and you just start wondering, should I even be doing this? Why don't I just get a job and get my, take my 100K a year? What's so bad about having somebody tell me what time to go to work at? What's so bad with having an alarm clock? What's so bad with telling having somebody tell me, uh, if I can work weekends or not, at least I can show up, get my paycheck and not disappoint anybody anymore. Have you had that thought? Um, I think sometimes I do it, you know, uh, it, it's kind of, it's, it's actually evil. I'll say it in front of my wife to get her to like, feel sorry for me, which is a like, horrendous. It's like, it, it's almost like you want sympathy for failing. And that's not what great leaders do. You learn from your mistakes, you man up, you rise up. And you put your big boy pants on and you consult with your trusted mentors and say, you know, I told, I told my coaches, I said, um, you know, it was embarrassing to even tell them. First of all, I'm like, I don't even want to tell them. And it wasn't just them who told me not to do it. A couple other, they, they said, I told them, but I've already got money invested. I'm going to burn a relationship. And they just said, they shook their heads and they're like, just cut your losses, man cut your losses. I didn't cut my losses and Why? I paid for it I, because uh, you, you make reasons. You're like, you, it's ego, man. It's ego because I want clothes. I want to say, look, I got a clothing line. Look, I got, you know, you, you, you said you're going to do so. Maybe I'll prove them wrong. It's ego. Ego's the enemy. So, mm. um, um, I didn't swallow my pride. Uh, and then you pay for it. I mean, I actually haven't even told this story in this much depth, to be honest. I don't even think I've told all my coaching members. I've told them that it was a failure, but I've actually not like – it feels bad saying the story because like a lot of people love M5 apparel and are wearing it, but I'm not doing any more apparel. People like – you know, there's the, the, the handful of people that bought it are like, you should do some more. You know, are you going to do a fall line? <laughs> like, hell no. <laughs> Sorry, man. We're done. M5 apparel is done. You know, once it's all gone, it's gone, you know. Um, I don't know, maybe I'll make myself some or something, but I don't mean to drag the story on so long, but I think a lot of people can relate to launching something and not seeing the success that they had hoped for. And other people were banking on it to be successful. And they feel like you now don't belong. And you're like, maybe I should just throw in the towel. And I can reassure you, that's just one of many disappointments. And I wouldn't call them like, you know, I've said failure, there's been a big lesson because I'm sharing this with you guys. You know how many people have come into my coaching program who've said, I want to do clothing. I'm like, you're going to compete with Christian Guzman. You're going to compete with Gymshark. Good luck. You know how, what, you know what kind of quantities those guys are getting so that they can get their price points low enough. Like you don't have a chance. You're going to compete with Randall pitch of live fit. That's what my guys told me. Vinny, you're not a clothing company, man. This is not your 5%. You don't know anything about clothing. Yet I didn't listen. So mm. um, now when I share this to my mastermind members, they're getting their money's worth because I'm steering them away from the mistakes that I made on my dime. And they're like, wow, I was about to drop 20 grand into some clothing. I had no idea. First of all, the profit margin are small i've talked to randall pitch it took him four years before they got traction like i know the behind the scenes if you're going to do clothing you have to be prepared to do only clothing and then you guys brought this up earlier you know guys trying to do all these different things it's hard enough to make one thing go mm. I, so, think yeah, that's man, I can re i can relate to guys disappointment and i'm um, sorry um that was a painful one for Vinny. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm really glad you, you shared that story. And I was digging a little bit deeper because I think it's important that people understand when you do try and spread yourself too thin, issues are going to occur when you step outside your zone of genius because of your ego. And I'm so happy you said that. It's my favorite book of all time, Ryan Holiday, Ego is the Enemy. It's incredible. And I encourage every PT, um, nutritionist, whoever, to read that book because we're in a very narcissistic in- industry where it's all about looks and, and how you appear and this is why we've got you know 18 year olds renting out Lamborghinis and all this kind of shit on social media. We've got to understand like the ego really is the enemy. So please go and get that book, study it, read it, and be aware of the decisions. Why you're making the decisions you are? Is it out of ego or is it because you're actually serving your mission? It's so important. So yeah. Vinny, with all of that said, man, I want to bring this back down to the one thing that you're really doing today. So I know we spoke a little bit about the coaching. Can you just explain a little bit more? what that one thing is that you're really hammering home. And then we'll, we'll yeah. talk about the side project as well. <laughs> yeah, I uh, launched a coaching program last summer. It's called the Vince Del Monte Seven Figure Mastermind. It's for online fitness entrepreneurs who want to start or scale successful and profitable online fitness business. So whether it's online coaching or fitness information products, I have uh, 70 people in this coaching program. I have uh, four coaches. And uh, this, this is my number one thing. My goal is to help 100 entrepreneurs to the next level of income and impact. Uh, For some of those guys, it's, you know, six figures a year. Uh, we got many guys who are already doing a couple hundred grand a month trying to go to seven figures a year. We even have a couple seven-figure earners in the group who are trying to go to eight figures and on their way. So, you know, my success has all been contributed to coaching and masterminds. I'm not a do-it-yourself. I I wasn't a product of do-it-yourself go to school on your mistakes. I was a product of coaches. I was a part of Craig Ballantyne's mastermind in 2008, Bedros Koolians in 2010, Dean Jackson, Ryan Levesque. I've invested heavily and I've always done really well when somebody has outside eyes and just tells me, Vince, do this. I'm really good at that. It's, you know, even when I competed uh, as a fitness model, when I worked with Ben, man, I just did what Ben told me and I got my best body. So I'm very good when someone tells me what to do. All right. So that's why I have a coaching program because I'm a product of coaching and masterminds and getting together every 90 days with the group, being held accountable, being given marching orders, getting around successful individuals, learning from the experts and knowing that I have to achieve what I've been told to do before the next meeting. And that's why my coaching program is set up with two day events every 90 days. And that's it. That's, that's the number one thing I'm focused on. And ever since I've got clarity on that, this has literally turned into a seven figure net profit business. It's, it's virtually all net profit because the only expenses I have on it are my coaches and paying for the events every 90 days. So it's a very profitable coaching program and it's having the most impact and it's where I'm most fulfilled And I've always wanted to be a coach and because, you know, I didn't play this card five years ago. I've, you know, if you will, played this card after 12 years of experience. So you're not listening to some, and I still run traffic to my fitness offers, my quiz funnel, my free plus shipping book offer. We have a supplement now. So I'm not teaching you how to make money without actually making money in a specific niche. So I can give you advice saying, hey, this is what we're doing right now. So it comes with so much more credibility and authority and trust from my students because I'm not saying, hey, this works for so-and-so. You should try it. No, I'm putting my money where my mouth is. So when I say work with so-and-so to run your Facebook ads, I can tell them with conviction, this is who I pay every month as well. Hey, hire so-and-so to write your sales copy. This is who I hired to write the sales copy for Fully Loaded. So – This is what I was born to do. I feel like I'm the one fitness business coach in the world that uh, has got more experience and who's better at this than anybody else. And it's because this is what I want to do. So I'm really just excited about taking our coaching program to the next level and seeing the success of so many students. Just last week, we had a girl uh, who joined in August and uh, she was shopping around with different coaches. Uh, I'm like three times as much as I guess the going rate for fitness business coaches. And she asked me, you know, why are you three times as much? And I told her, you tell me, why do you think I am? 
<laughs> Anyways, she was really skeptical before joining. She finally made the leap. Last week, she made $70,000 in one week just from a launch on her Instagram page with her eight-week challenge. I had another guy who just sent me a message yesterday uh, from Europe. He did $34,000 in one day from a webinar he launched. Uh, we've got guys who are going from 5K a month to 50K a month. And uh, it's over the past year. And many of them are being featured on my YouTube channel. So you can actually go hear their stories. This is what I was meant to do. You know, I'm connected with more people in the industry than anybody else. I know the different business models. I've made so many mistakes. I've had so many successes that uh, when, I, when I announced this coaching program, the response was, it's about time. It, it was crazy because a lot of my friends were like, we thought you were going to do this a few years ago. Finally, you're doing it now. And uh, yeah, it just, I want to reassure people that like you said it right. Timing is everything. You know, don't be a business coach if you don't have like a decade behind you. You're not ready. It, it's going to fizzle out. Like you can't be a business coach if you're only making 10, 20 grand a year. Like, cause you're going to be limited by the amount of people you can help. You got to get your own success up so that when you do launch it, you've got way more, you know, opportunity to help more people. It'll be more appealing and more competitive. So uh, timing is everything on when you decide to do the next thing in your evolution of, you know, business growth, et cetera. Awesome, man. And just to um, sort of reiterate that, you talked about some of the social handles that you're on. So you're on YouTube, you're on Instagram as well. How do the guys get hold of you? Best is DMing me on Instagram at Vince Del Monte. Perfect, man. And the final question for today, and that is what does freedom mean to you? I'm going to steal one from Grant Cardone. <laughs> I heard him say this and I said, this is, this is fantastic. You know, I'll be honest. I never, I don't, I've never had a good answer. I don't know if you guys can relate to this, but I borrow people's answers. I'm very authentic about that. I'm like, <laughs> I don't know what freedom is to be honest. Uh, I, I don't know. Um, but when he said this, I'm like, that's a pretty cool goal. He said mobility, the ability to move. And, uh, you know, if there were some terrorists here in Toronto, the ability to get a helicopter in my backyard and get the heck out. Like, to me, that, you know, that's freedom. You know, if I'm in Hawaii and there's a freaking volcano erupting, being able to get, you know, a couple of helicopters for me and all my loved ones off the freaking island in a second. You know, like being able to move. I think for me, being able to get up and move locations and not being constrained by um, surroundings. That to me is like a really cool goal um, because there's a safety piece in there. There's a control piece in there. There's an impact piece in there. But to be able to move, uh, you know, Grant Cardone just bought a jet stream, a $50 million jet. And if you listen to him talk about that, like most people wouldn't understand why do you need a jet? Well, if you think about what he's trying to do, reach the world and time equals money, like he can't afford to, you know, go any other, not have, you can't afford not to have a jet. And it's like, wow, that's 10 X thinking. It just really challenges you to think about like, this isn't about money. This is about impact and contribution and to reach more me people. Money just is a vehicle, right? Right. <laughs> so I think uh, that would be my definition of freedom at the moment. That's been the most compelling thing to me, being able to move wherever and whenever with whoever, being able to get my whole family to a location you know, if we wanted to go to Italy or something and experience something together on a last minute notice because somebody gets sick or something. To me, something like that. And I know some people would say, ah, but you don't need to be able to go somewhere. For me, that represents the, the, the ability to be able to do so is pretty cool. Yeah, I think both George and I agree with that one. Like we think travel is incredibly important. Opportunity is incredibly important. And to build a business that allows you to do that is everything for us as well. So Vince, Thank you so much for jumping on again. As we said at the start, this is the second recording. So you're giving up an extra hour of your time, which you didn't need to do. So we really appreciate that, man. And I um, hope the listeners enjoyed it. They can obviously get hold of you at Vince Del Monte. All the links will be in the show notes as well. Go and check out the Seven Figure Mastermind and see what Vince is offering there. He does events around the states that you can get involved in as well. So go and check all that stuff out. All the links are down below. And Vince, thank you so much for jumping on the show. And we'll see you soon, my man. James, George, thank you guys. Thanks, Vince. See you, man. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to the Remote Revolution Show. If you enjoyed the show, please head across to iTunes, YouTube, and our other social media platforms to leave us a quick rating and review.
And if you'd like your questions answering, we'd love to hear from you. So please send them into info at remoterevolutionshow.com. And please remember the show is all about growing the remote revolution. So if you wish to join the community and scale your business, then please head over to www.remoterevolutionshow.com or click the link in the show notes to grab our free download. Yes, seriously, don't be lazy. Click the link in the show notes and grab the downloads. And as always, we'll see you next week.